I just want to say a big shout out and a big thank you to the three companies that support the Forever Blue products. Thank you very much, guys, particularly right now. Uh, the world has changed somewhat uh, in just one week. Um, it feels enormously different than when we were sitting here last week uh, doing a podcast, looking ahead to the Arsenal game, the return of Mikel Arteta, and then the Burnley game, and slightly further afield, the Real Madrid game. Suddenly, all those games have been cancelled, um, well, certainly postponed, may eventually be cancelled. We don't know at this stage where we are, um, but we're in a very, very strange place. Um, I would like to say to all the people out there who are anxious and worried uh, that clearly I am, we are as well. Uh, however, we're City fans and we have a certain type of humour, we have a certain type of mentality, and, and I don't want us to lose that. I do question at times uh, when everybody is very anxious the extreme views that there are out there. There are some people who say, you know, what's going on? Why is everybody acting differently? Why are there all these panic buying? Uh, everything, everybody should carry on and just smile. Um, there are other people who are really worried and really anxious, uh, particularly those who've got older relatives or are older themselves. And clearly the actions of governments around the world suggest that there is a big problem <laughs> without stating the obvious. So what do we, where do we stand? What, why are we doing a podcast? Well, we're doing a podcast because, first of all, um, it's what I do. Um, these days I, I make my living from vlogging and podcasting and Tameside Radio, where I'm sat this afternoon and writing books. And all of those different things um, make me a living. And clearly without matches, that is in jeopardy. But there are a lot of people worse off than me, so I've got no complaints about that. Um, but we're all a little bit anxious is the point. I want to carry on. I don't want to be flippant about anything that, that's going on in the world at the moment. Um, but I also like to keep part of the family going. And I have got two members of the Forever Blue podcast team with me today. And we'll be joined in just a few moments by Paul Lake the former Manchester City midfielder. Uh, I'd also like to think, ch thank charleslouis.co.uk, who are the sponsors of this podcast, who, despite the uncertainty of what we're going to do going forward, are uh, right behind me, and I appreciate that, as are, of course, Hot Click Marketing and the RRG Group have been involved in the vlogs that I do, which, for the moment, are suspended, though there may be videos that pop up on the Forever Blue YouTube channel. Um, so thanks very much to them. We're in uncharted waters. We don't know whether in one more week from now, everything's changed again because as I was driving here, um, the Austrian authorities have banned, or are gonna be banning, um, meetings of five people or more, which seems very radical and very drastic, especially compared to what, as we are recording this podcast, and I'll emphasize this on Sunday the 15th of March, 2020, to put it into context, as we sit here now, who knows what the next stage of the development is. Maybe we won't be allowed to sit here and have a podcast like this. Maybe this will blow over and all the people who are saying it's nothing what you're worried about, it's just a bit of a cold, will be right and maybe everything will resume soon. I think what is without doubt is that people who think they know what's going to happen um, don't know. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether you're a prime minister, uh, a president, whether you're a cleaner, whether you're a housewife, whether you're a humble podcast presenter, nobody, and I mean nobody, can say what is going to happen as we go forward. Uh, afterwards, you can all claim that you knew what was going to happen, but as we sit here now, nobody knows what is going to happen. Because it is like your right arms been ripped off. I mean, I know for me, it feels like it's not the norm, you know, for the last... 20 years since I was six year old, I've always known football to be played on a Saturday, to be played through the week, to see three games cancelled in the space of a week, to not see the second leg of a Champions League game against Madrid played. It all feels a bit alien to us and it is because it's so unprecedented. But like you say, when, when you do take everything into account and you look at it from a more humane perspective, you know, football was invented by humans and it hasn't always been a thing. You know, human life has always been a thing, football hasn't. But I think because we've been brought up with it, um, and we're all football obsessives, I believe. It, it, it's just it's difficult not to have it there. But obviously, after three or four weeks, it'll become the norm to an extent, and we'll start to obviously think about it returning in the coming future, and start thinking about you know just living life um, in the best way possible until it does return. But I think just to in a sense balance this, I, I can understand why people are feeling a bit you know lonely without football. But when you do take it all into account, 
um, like like you, you've all said, and I agree. Um, you know, life is more important. Yeah, than yeah. I, I have got a temperature. I don't think I've got anything that uh, you know with regard to the coronavirus. But you know, I, I don't know, and not being able to get tested, I'm, I'm putting myself into a situation where whether well, I want to expose you and anybody else to uh, the potential that I may be carrying or may not be. I don't think I am, but I just think again, common sense should prevail, and if we can, you know, um, prevent any potential. Um, contact which might, you know, uh, so the consequence might be that you're passing something on to somebody else, or within as that may be, I think it's a risk that we don't need to take. Yeah, I, I mean, I completely and utterly agree. Um, in these circumstances that we're, we're going through at the moment, everything is so fast developing, it's such a fast paced situation that it almost seems like hour upon hour my phone is just pinging constantly with with new news updates new shutdowns new lockdowns in different countries and um almost to the point that it seems like we're struggling to keep up with with the breaking news with it um i completely agree with paul obviously you know health is absolute priority and football i can't actually see where the season would go from here I do think it should be null and void and I don't say that because I'm sat here, you know, wearing a City shirt, there's no element of bias. Obviously, if it was the other way around and, and City were like 25 points ahead, everybody would be like, you know, oh, it's so unfair, but you've got to take your, your, your club hat off in this situation. You've got to think logically and you've got to think about other people. And it's not necessarily about us in this situation. It's about the vulnerable people in society. There's a lot of people who are kind of not really getting it. There's a lot of people who I see who are just saying it, it's just like flu. But it, it, it it's not the time to be an I'm all right, Jack, in this situation. It's a time to, to take precautionary measures and think about the vulnerable people in society. You might be all right. You may contract it and feel poorly for a few days, but then you may pass it on to your, your mum, your grandma, who's got ailments, who's older, and that's the whole point in all of this. You've got to kind of minimise the risks everywhere and limit contact as far as you can. If you feel like there are vulnerable people in the family, that's who we've got to be doing this for. And I mean, we all love football, don't we? But it has to take a back seat in all of it. We have to go with what's happening and we just have to see what, but I don't, I think we've seen the last of the football now until perhaps September. Um, and I await to see what happens on Tuesday from UEFA, from the meeting there. I think the Euros will be put back a year Thursday with the meeting with the Premier League and all the Premier League clubs. I, I just can't see how they can all sit down and I can't see how it will all be concluded. I don't think, I think we'll be going through this for month, many months and I think it'll be much, much worse. We see what's happening in Italy at the moment. It's absolutely terrifying. There's, there's no sugarcoating what's going to happen. That is going to happen here. And we've got a tidal wave. It's, I feel like I'm standing on a beach watching a tsunami coming towards me. And, and some people just don't get how serious it is. A really big thank you once again to the three companies that make Forever Blue available to you for free always. Thank you guys, particularly right now.